I had a lot of exposure to yoga when I was a kid, as a teenager, and through college. My grandma is 90 years old. She came to the States in 1948 from Germany, where she had lost most of her family in the war. And she was a school teacher and a yoga teacher up until just a few years ago, up until her late 80s and I'm in it too for the long haul. I'm in this practice for, of mindful movement for life. I'm an interdisciplinary yoga teacher, which means that I draw from a number of different yoga styles. I would say that my home yoga style is the Kripalu tradition. And from Kripalu, you get this profound foundation in compassion, self-compassion. There's never been any kind of dogma that I felt was associated with it. Beyond that, I studied Anusara pretty intensively. And I was introduced to some really life-changing teachers, some great uh, appreciation of the now. And then I got my 300-hour training through a former teacher trainer for Yoga Works. And so much skillful alignment, so much skillful anatomy was embedded into that. And I'm just profoundly grateful for all of these lineages and others that I've studied and for each and every one of my teachers. I had moved to Washington DC to work on environmental policy and to work with a number of different nonprofits and my day job was really heavy. It wasn't the career that was gonna be a good fit for me for the rest of my life. And meanwhile, I was moonlighting most nights teaching yoga gigs. And I thought, oh, I'll move in that direction. And then I injured my shoulder. That injury was really profound, was really life-changing, and it led me on this long path to getting my doctorate in physical therapy. The reason why I don't practice physical therapy full-time and drop the yoga is because I really believe that the world needs more of this skill that I have, the merging of the science and the physical asana to really improve and empower individuals to self-heal.